everyone wants to make you believe that everything out there is going to attack your thyroid. Okay. That if you eat this, your thyroid's going to burst into flames and you're never going to have a metabolism again and you'll never be able to lose weight. All right, look at There are some things out there that can damage your thyroid. And yes, we live in a world where things are chaotic and things are crazy and we don't know everything that reacts within our bodies. But I looked hard, okay, and I could find four major things that will absolutely mess up your thyroid. And we're going to lay them out. But these four things are big things that can play a huge role. So I want you to hear me out through all of them so you can figure out some proper solutions. Hey, we got new videos coming out all the time, by the way, almost every single day. I want you to hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon, give it a good old slap so you can turn on notifications whenever I go live. And then after this video, if you guys want, you might wanna check out Thrive Market. I was able to create some specific grocery bundles through Thrive Market, so that way people that are watching my videos can get specific grocery items that I recommend. That way, I'm not one-sided. I'm not just saying, hey, this product's great or this product's great. I can just put them into a grocery bundle that you can get through Thrive. So after this video, check out Thrive Market down below in the description. Okay, let's talk about the first one. This is the elephant in the room, okay? But it's not as simple as everyone thinks it is. Rapid weight loss or weight loss in general is probably the number one reason that people end up going hypothyroid. It can damage your thyroid. But does that mean that losing weight is bad? No, no, not at all, okay? What happens is when you lose weight, your thyroid simply just reels it on back because it doesn't want you to accelerate the fat loss too much because from an evolutionary standpoint, it just wouldn't make sense. It's just doing its job. It's just modulating your metabolism a little bit. But what happens is the thyroid slows down and people stop losing weight. So they aggressively reduce calories more or they start trying all kinds of different things, grasping for straws, and they just go down this rabbit hole and they just end up crushing their thyroid even more. It can be really, really difficult. And then you run into issues of zinc deficiency, which we'll talk about later on, and you just run into this terrible thing. So how do you course correct that? Okay, well, you wanna look at specific kinds of diets and protocols that don't kill your thyroid levels. Okay, now, don't get me wrong. Your thyroid levels are going to decrease when you lose weight, it's a given. But what you don't want to have happen is your thyroid stimulating hormone to increase. Let me break this down very, very simple for you. Here's what happens. When your thyroid levels decrease, you have another equation called thyroid stimulating hormone, and that tries to ramp up activity because it's thyroid stimulating hormone. It's the job of this stimulating hormone to stimulate more thyroid. So when thyroid is lower, the stimulating hormone is higher because it's working hard to crank that up. It's like a fisherman just cranking the reel, just trying, come on thyroid, get on up, come on up. It's working harder and harder and harder. Okay, so, if your thyroid levels are low and your thyroid stimulating hormone is high, that's when you're in a bad situation because that fisherman is working hard, but it's not going anywhere. There are a lot of instances, however, like specifically with a low carb, high fat protocol, like a keto diet, something like that, you'll see the thyroid levels go lower, but the thyroid stimulating hormone doesn't go higher, which indicates that the fisherman is like, hey, we're actually good like this. We're totally good because what happens is the cells don't need as much thyroid, so you don't have to create as much. Your thyroid sensitivity improved. It's like you don't need as much thyroid, you're more efficient with it. So the case in point here is try to utilize a ketogenic diet even for a short amount of time, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, because it takes about two to three weeks for the thyroid to sort of reboot. Okay, now this next one we have to talk about is a big one, and some of you are gonna turn off the video because you're gonna think I'm just bona fide nuts. Okay, and that is gluten. Gluten plays a big role with the thyroid, specifically if you're dealing with thyroid issues that are autoimmune related. Okay, Dr. Amy Meyer has come out with some pretty interesting stuff. So her theory is sort of this three-step theory, and this kind of gets backed up with some, some science which we'll talk about in a second. But what happens is when you consume gluten, your body ends up having an increase in what's called zonulin. Now, this zonulin causes the little gaps in your gut that are normally tightly, tightly wound and tightly weaved to actually break up a little bit. This is called a leaky gut, which you've probably heard of before, but it happens to a small degree with anyone that eats gluten, anyone. You don't have to be celiac. So what happens is then when you have a leaky gut, you have microbial metabolites, you have toxins, you have food particles, all these things going into the bloodstream that shouldn't be going into the bloodstream yet. They're a tad too big. And because they're a tad too big, the body's like, well, me not compute, I don't understand. And it starts saying, immune system, go. So it fights those things because they're big particles. Well, when our immune system gets elevated, so do antibodies to specific things. It just so happens 
that the antibody that affects gluten or works on gluten, so the gluten particles that get in the bloodstream raise a specific antibody that just so happens to be the same antibody that attacks thyroid tissue. So we have what's called molecular mimicry. Because we have gluten coming into the bloodstream, the antibodies that go to fight gluten go to fight the thyroid. So it triggers an issue. Now there's a study that was published in the Experimental and Clinical Endocrinology and Diabetes Journal. This is a 2019 study. We're talking new stuff here. You took a look at 34 women with autoimmune thyroid disease. So we're looking at things like Hashimoto, stuff like that. Divided them into two groups for six months. A simple gluten-free group and a regular gluten group. Well, they measured a couple things. They measured thyroglobulin and thyroid peroxidase. Okay, so TG and TPO. Okay, these are enzymes that help convert thyroid and basically things that help make thyroid ultimately work. So they wanted to measure teeters. They wanted to measure specific antibodies against those. Well, long story short, here's what happened after six months. They found after six months, the group on the gluten-free diet had significantly less in the way of antibodies affecting TG and TPO, thyroid peroxidase, showing that they had less immune system activity fighting the thyroid by a huge amount compared to the gluten group. Okay, so we have strong evidence there that if you're hypothyroid and your thyroid is messed up from autoimmune conditions, because Hashimoto is pretty dang common, my wife has it. Now let's move into the next one, specific mineral deficiencies, and I'm talking mainly about zinc. Everyone on the internet wants to talk about iodine and selenium. Okay, it's easy because we need iodine to make thyroid, but it's pretty, pretty hard to find someone that truly has an iodine deficiency. It's also pretty hard to find someone that truly has a selenium deficiency because you can eat one or two Brazil nuts and you're there. But it's not hard to find someone that has a zinc deficiency. Zinc is required for the synthesis of thyroid, but it's also required for the cell's receptors to accept thyroid. And guess what? When you go hypothyroid, once your thyroid drops, you stop absorbing zinc as much. So here's the deal. You lose weight, your thyroid shrinks, or your thyroid production shrinks, okay? And then you're no longer absorbing zinc. So now not only is your thyroid low, but you're not absorbing zinc, so the cells can't utilize what little thyroid you do have, so your metabolism slows down even more. Insert vicious cycle, okay? Sure, iodine, yeah, selenium, that's all important. Eat your Brazil nuts, eat your seaweed, okay? For sure, but get your zinc in. Eat some oysters, eat some fatty fish, eat some specific meats. Get the meat in there that you need to get the zinc up, okay? That is so important. And lastly, this one's specifically for the ladies, estrogen. Okay, whether it's excess estrogen from whatever hormonal imbalance you have going on, or it's excess estrogen because of the pill. This is very critical. Estrogen upregulates thyroxine binding globulin, okay? TBG. Just like the name implies, it's a globulin that binds to thyroid. So let's say you have all this happy-go-lucky thyroid floating around. Yay, metabolism's hot, we're rocking and rolling, thyroid's moving, moving. But then you've got binding globulin that's like, hey, I'm binding globulin, and it's like gonna just grab it. Okay, it's gonna grab that happy little thyroid, and it's gonna make it a globulin. It's gonna make it gooey, so it can't do anything. So you were here, you were great, you had a good amounts of thyroid, but then the estrogen upregulated the globulin that just went rawr and grabbed it now you have less available thyroid to actually use within your body. In fact, if you don't believe me, the New England Journal of Medicine published a study that took a look at 36 women, and lo and behold, if they had estrogen, if they had too much estrogen, they had an increase in this thyroid binding globulin, thyroxine binding globulin, and a decrease in free thyroid. Huge correlation, and it makes perfect sense. And birth controls a lot of times are estrogen based, but birth controls will also cause specific mineral deficiencies. I don't necessarily have an answer for you here. I'm not an endocrinologist, I'm not an OBGYN that can say, hey, you need a specific birth control or not. But it's important to at least know the facts as far as mineral deficiencies and estrogen so you can make the proper decision and at least talk with your healthcare practitioner so they can help you make the right decision if there's someone that you trust. Anyhow, I hope that this made a lot of sense for you. Yeah, we broke it down, tried to make it simple, but the truth is the thyroid is complex. But if you watch out for these things, you can save yourself some headache. As always, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.